Okay, so I wanted to do another factoring video. I've got factoring on the AC method. I've got factoring on an AC method that's prime. I've got a grouping difference of squares and GCF, I think. And so I wanted to do one with the GCF that also uses AC method. That way I could get as many different types of factoring as I, as I can. Uh, and so what we have here is I have 5y cubed minus 39y squared minus 8y equals 0. And we're told to solve. And we're going to solve by factoring. Because it's so important for everyone to know how to factor. If you're going through uh, intermediate algebra, if you're going through college algebra, pre-cal, trig, cal, any of your math classes that lead through the STEM path, you have to know how to factor in order to be successful in both your class and the next class. And so what I emphasize to both my intermediate algebra students and my college algebra students is I don't want them to pass the class if they don't know how to factor. I want to make sure all my students that pass my classes are really good at factoring. That way when they go on to the next course, and they're learning something new, they're not gonna be hung up on not understanding how to do it because they don't know how to factor. They can fight with the new stuff and they're not gonna to have to worry about trying to relearn how to factor because they'd always try to take shortcuts and always try to get away from it and always try to avoid it at all costs. It's gonna come back to bite us if we don't know how to do factoring. So what we're gonna do first, the first step to factoring, no matter what, always, I don't care how many terms you have, your first step is always GCF. So I'm gonna look here, five, 39, and eight. They have no common factors. So I know I don't have a number. But y cubed, y squared, and y, I have a GCF of a y. So I'm gonna take that out. And then I'm going to write everything that would be left over inside the parentheses. So 5y cubed, take 1y away. 5y squared, we're technically dividing. 5y cubed divided by y. 39y squared divided by y. Negative 8y divided by y. Okay, so the first thing I did was I factored out the GCF. Now I'm going to look at the inside. Every time you factor, once you finish whatever step of factoring you're doing, you need to look at the inside. Can it factor more? I don't care if you're doing GCF, if you're doing AC method, if you're doing grouping. Every time you do any step of factoring, look at the inside. Can it factor more? Okay. Here, we have three terms. That is the AC method. Three terms, AC method, no matter what. Anytime you have three terms. What gets people is if they carry this Y with them step by step by step, 90% of the time it's gonna screw them up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Y and I'm gonna jump it down to my answer. Just like in the real world. In the real world, if I'm working on stuff and I get a stack of papers finished, but I still carry that around me everywhere I go, I am most likely gonna lose that stack of papers. So I'm gonna take this Y that that's finished. I've already taken it out. I'm gonna jump it down. I'm gonna have my answer somewhere around there. I'm gonna do some of my work off to the side so that I can try to keep this as vertical as possible. Okay. AC method, we're only focused on the inside. That Y is already gone. That's in our answer. So we're only focused on this inside. A is 5. B is negative 39. And C is negative 8. So inside numbers only. That means AC is 5 times negative 8, which is negative 40. So when I want factors of AC, and I want the sum of those factors to be B. Now, if you're still struggling with AC method, you've got to write these words down. The more you write the words down, the better you're going to understand what this chart is, why we're doing this chart, 
And after about 10 or 15 times of writing the words down, you're not gonna need them anymore. Because you're like, I know what to do. But I get a lot of people that tell me why I understand AC method and when I get to the test, I just can't remember how to fill the chart in. And I tell them then you didn't write the words down enough. So if you keep writing those words down, it's gonna become second nature to start saying factors of A. One and what make negative 40? Negative 40. If I add those together, I get negative 39. Is that B? Oh, nice, awesome. It's not always gonna happen on the first try. It's always nice when it happens on the first try, uh, but it doesn't always happen on the first try. I like to always start with one, uh, because people who do guess and check, they normally don't start with one, and so this would have been one of the last ones, and more likely one that they missed. So we're gonna do one and negative 40 is gonna become my new B. So when I come back over here, I'm not focused on green. Green's in my answer. I have five y squared. Instead of 39, I have plus one y minus 40 y minus eight equals zero. Do grouping, GCF is just a y. So I'm gonna take a y out be left over with 5y plus 1. Over here, GCF is 8, but always take whatever the first sign is. If that first sign's positive, your GCF's positive, just like here, it was positive. If this first sign's negative, it's going to be a negative. So negative 8, if we do negative 40y divided by negative 8, that's going to be positive 5y. Negative 8 divided by negative 8 is negative 1. Remember, these have to be the same. Because your next step, we're taking these out. And then what's going to be left over? Y minus 8. Make sure these factors get put down with your Y. Don't forget about that Y. Um, and then always, anytime you do any step of factoring, 5Y plus 1, can that be factored more? It's only two terms, so that means it's either GCF or sum or difference or difference of squares or sum or difference of cubes. So no squares, no cubes, five and one, no GCF, no letters in common. Y minus eight, two terms again, means it's one of your formulas. There's no squares, no cubes, there's no GCF. That's as far as it can go. Oh, equals zero. I forgot the equals zero, I'm sorry. It is equal to zero. Uh, I have this joke I give in my classes, we are not God. Therefore, we cannot create nor destroy an equal sign. So if there's an equal sign in our original question, it has to be in our answer. So we're gonna take each one of these. Y equals zero, that's an answer. Five Y plus one, that's an answer. We're gonna subtract one and divide by five. It's gonna give us Y equals negative one fifth. And y minus eight, add eight, y equals eight. Keep in mind, very beginning, your highest exponent tells you there's three answers. One, two, three, okay? 